Do you want to learn more about how you can optimize the performance of your AWS lambdas? In this video, we're going to be diving deep into how the performance of your AWS lambdas works and how you can optimize it for performance and cost. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the best developer that you can be. If you watch this video and you learn something new, then make sure to give it a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm suggest the video to more developers like yourselves. In this video, we're going to be looking at the performance of AWS Lambdas. And to understand that, we first need to understand about the memory allocation that happens whenever you create a new Lambda. Every Lambda has an assigned amount of memory from 128 megabytes all the way up to three gigabytes. And as well as changing the amount of RAM that that process has to use, it also affects what portion of the CPU it has access to. So from 128 megabytes all the way up to 1,792 megabytes, you are getting a split share of a single core. Above that, between that and three gigs, you're then getting a full core to yourself, plus a split of a second core. So the first thing to consider when you're assigning memory is does your API Lambda work with multi-threading? If it doesn't work with multi-threading, so you can only use one core at a time, for example, if you're writing Node.js Lambdas, then you should never assign more than two gigs of RAM as that extra that you're paying for isn't going to be turned into increased performance. The next thing that we need to consider is actually how much of that RAM and share of the CPU do we actually need to use? One way to check the amount of memory that your Lambda is actually using is to go into your CloudWatch logs and at the bottom of every execution is a detail about how much memory your Lambda actually used. This is a good guideline to show you whether you're using way, way too much, but I would never use this as a fixed value because you can always have variation between requests. So some take a little bit more and some take a little bit less. As well as that, you need to consider that if you have a lower amount of memory, you have a lower amount of performance. And this brings us on to the next stage, which is how the cost of your AWS Lambda is calculated. The way it's calculated is you take the amount of memory it's assigned in gigabytes, times that by the time it takes, split down to 100 milliseconds, so 0.1 seconds, and then times that by the a rate which is defined by AWS. For example, if you have a Lambda and you've given it 128 megabytes of RAM, which is the minimum, that is one eighth of a gig of RAM. If it then takes 4.12 seconds, that gets rounded up to 4.2 seconds. And then you times that by a rate and you can calculate how much it's going to cost to execute that Lambda. If you then change something, so if you change the amount of memory it has, so change it from 128 megabytes up to one gig of, of memory, you might see that this amount of time it takes to execute that drops down because having more memory means you've got more share of the CPU. Therefore, the processing drops down. 
in this case with one gig of RAM, you may end up only taking, say, one second instead of four seconds. You then times the amount of RAM by the new time and get the new cost. As you can see, this has actually increased the cost, but decreased the time. And this is something that you need to weigh up yourselves. Having more RAM, if you've got a CPU intensive task, is going to drive down the amount of time it takes, but normally it will actually increase the cost. With a task that is more IO intensive, as in something that is going to hit an external API and sit there waiting, that doesn't really vary much with the CPU. So having a much smaller amount of RAM could be more efficient because doubling the RAM isn't going to double the speed. This can be really complicated, trying to balance the power at the performance with costs and how much CPU does my task actually need, and it can all get very complicated. Luckily, we have the Lumigo CLI, which is an NPM package, which allows us to power tune our lambdas using their CLI. What you can do is you can pass in your function, an event JSON, and then whether you want to tune it for cost, performance, or for a balance in the middle. What it will do is it will hit your Lambda a thousand times with different configurations, and then be able to give you the results of how much it's going to cost, and how much performance and the time to execute for each of the sizes. This can then be presented really nicely on a graph just like this, and that will allow you to really easily see how you're varying the amount of memory increases or decreases the performance. This gives you much better tools to make intelligent decisions about the size of your memory. So in this video, we've looked at how we can change the performance of our AWS Lambda by varying the amount of memory. We talked about how varying the memory also varies how much CPU power you get and how that can affect the runtime, which in total with the amount of memory and the runtime is used to calculate the cost to run your Lambda. We then found out that balancing that can be quite complicated. So there is a CLI called the Lumigo CLI, which allows us to power tune it to give us the information we need to make that decision. If you've learned something new in this video, please make sure to give it a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm suggest it to more developers like yourselves. And if you haven't done already, make sure to subscribe down here and turn on that bell notification so that you get a notification whenever I next upload a deep dive video.